Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Caligula and other plays by Albert Camus. So this contains uh, Caligula, Cross Purpose, The Just and The Possessed. Uh, it has a really cool introduction as well. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to check out some of my tabs and uh, update you as I go, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Camus' powerful drama Caligula portrays a monstrous, nihilistic emperor who, in destroying everything around him, ultimately destroys men, gods, and even himself. The other philosophical plays collected here also reveal the author's deep sense of the human condition. Cross Purpose shows a universe in which cruel, inexplicable things happen to innocent and evil alike, and the more overtly political works, The Just and The Possessed, dramatise action and revolt in the name of liberty, and question whether violence can ever be justified. Taken together, these plays illustrate a shift in Camus' perceptions, from the existentialist perception of life's absurdity to a more humane, politically engaged worldview. So, let's take a look. I'm going to start with the introduction. Uh, does it say it was written by John Cruikshank? And I don't think there was a huge amount I tabbed in this. Oh, so I just thought this was interesting about his death. Uh, I knew he uh, died in a car crash, but I didn't know that some of the details here. Camus did not live to see either the achievement of Algerian independence in 1962 or its aftermath. On Monday the 4th of January 1960, travelling at a speed between Saint and Paris in a Facel vague, driven by his friend and publisher Michel Gallimard, he met sudden death when the car skidded, hit two plane trees and was virtually cut in half. He was 46. Part of the irony lies in the fact that he disliked cars and had intended to travel to Paris by train until Gallimard persuaded him to change his mind. The return half of a rail ticket to Paris was found in his pocket. Part of the tragedy is suggested by what he had recently written in the preface to a new volume of L'Envers et L'Endroit. I continue to be convinced that my work hasn't even been begun. Okay, so into Caligula, Act 1. And because these are plays, a lot of what I've tabbed out is just dialogue. It's a great line. That young man was too fond of literature. That was me. Except I'm not young anymore. And so Caligula say the truth that he's discovered is men die and they are not happy. Which is very uh, absurdist. And another absurdist line Caligula says, Caligula says this world has no importance. Once a man realises that, he wins his freedom. And another great line from Caligula, he says, Ah, but for that I'd need to sleep to let myself go. And that's impossible. And Cezonia says, so one always thinks when one is overtired. And that's just the story of my life with insomnia. So uh, Caligula was great, again, about the Roman Emperor Caligula. Cross Purpose was probably my favourite of the collection, uh, even though I would translate the title as Misheard. That's basically about a man goes to stay at an inn, and he doesn't reveal to the owners that he's the, the, the mother's son. And they kill him because that's what they do to people, they kill them and take their money. Um, and then they find out what happened. Now I was just enjoying that place, so I didn't tab out a huge amount, but I did tab one thing. Um, the mother says, wait a little please, isn't it strange how helpless and defenceless men look like when they're asleep? And Martha says, it's a rest they take before becoming again the savage brutes or silly apes they are. And the mother says, no, men aren't quite so remarkable as you seem to think, and really they don't change when they're asleep. It's we who look at them with different eyes, and the sudden nakedness of their faces, without any glow of passion or frown of discontent, takes us aback. But of course you, Martha, don't know what I mean. And then I just really like the ending of it here. So Maria, the sister, she's talking to the manservant. And so Maria, who is uh, the wife, um, talks to the manservant and she says, but help me, help me, for I need help. Be kind and say that you will help me. And the old manservant just says, no. And then the curtains close. Then we have the just, which is like a tale of revolution and the cost of revolution, the human cost, whether it's worth it or not. Uh, and this reminded me a lot of uh, Joseph Conrad's The Secret Agent. We get some great dialogue in this one. Switzerland's a prison too. Well, at least they're free there. Freedom will remain a prison until every man on earth is free. We get this. Uh, then there's Yannick. You don't know him, do you? Yannick? His real name is Kaliyev. We also called him the poet. That's no name for a terrorist. Well, Yannick thinks it is. He says that all poetry is revolutionary. Only bombs are revolutionary. And Kaliyev says, but that's what love is, to give everything, to sacrifice everything without expecting anything in return. And Kaliyev also says, oh, there are too many crimes, too much poverty in the world today. One day when there's less poverty, there'll be fewer crimes. We will see, I suppose. Or maybe we won't, judging how we do with poverty at the moment. And uh, Kaliyev he goes into jail for killing the Grand Duke and um, Foka kind of distances himself from Foka as another one of the prisoners. And Kaliyev goes, wait, what have I done? You ain't done nothing. It's just that I wouldn't like to make a fool of a fine gentleman like you. I mean, it's all right talking like that just to pass the time. But, but if you're going to be hanged, well, I mean, well, it just ain't fair. Why? And the guard's laughing. He says, go on then, tell him. Um, Foka goes, well, all this talk about you and me being brothers it isn't any use. I'm the hangman. Okay, and so we're moving on to the final play in this collection, which is uh, The Possessed, which is based on a novel by Fyodor Dostoevsky. 
and Anton Grigoriev, the narrator, he has like a soliloquy at the beginning and he says, it's hardly possible to love one's wife and justice at the same time. And we get this really interesting bit here between Grigoriev and Kirillov. Um, at night I reflect, all night long. Yes, it is essential. You see, I'm concerned with the reasons why men don't dare kill themselves. Don't dare. In your opinion, there are not enough suicides. And absentmindedly, Kirillov goes, normally there ought to be many more. And what, in your opinion, keeps people from killing themselves? The pain. Those who kill themselves through madness or despair don't think of the pain. But those who kill themselves through reason obviously think of it. What, are there people who kill themselves through reason? Many. Were it not for the pain and the prejudice, there would be many more. A very large number. Probably all men. And Peter goes has a great line. He says, no need for love. Science will take its place. So yeah, all in all, I did enjoy Caligula and other plays by Albert Camus. I would give the first two plays, Caligula and Cross Purpose, a four out of five. Uh, then The Just was like 3.5 and The Possessed was also 3.5. Overall, a four out of five for the whole collection. Definitely recommend it. I'd love to go and see some of these performed as well. And it's reaffirmed my love for Albert Camus. So there we have it, that's what I made of Caligula and other plays by Albert Camus. As always, don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments if you've read this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.